Jens Stomp it here. So I'm here at this one. It's almost finished. And sorry. And I've done my best to answer your questions in the comments. I did manage to answer them all, but I did my best. You know, there's so much stuff I could check out here. And I was a bit distracted by some meetings. So I hope you'll enjoy the video and maybe learn a thing or two about the gear you may need to get for the coming season. Enjoy this video. Faction skis. You did four lines though, tell me. Yeah, so what we've done is we really wanted to just sort of simplify our lineup and make it easier for people to understand where we were coming from. And so, obviously, you all know the Condit Tovac Signature Series. That's a twin tip series that I would say maybe is a little bit more geared towards freestyle just because we have the symmetrical skis on the one and the two, and then we got some nice freestyle free ride backcountry skis in the three and the four. The Prodigy Series is similar, it's twin tip, um, but it's a, little bit sim it's a little bit more simple construction. And uh, so it's just a wood core ski, really well built, super durable, twin tip, uh, but not symmetrical. So a little bit more directional style skiing. And uh, so that could be for somebody who's, you know, wants something that has maybe a bit shorter radius, but they still want to be able to float in powder. So they still want a versatile ski, but uh, something that they can spin with that's super playful. And then we have um, some flat tail, a couple of flat tail ranges here. This one's got metal in it, two, two layers of titanium in it. So really a ski that you can go fast with super charging, nice charging ski, but still easy to turn with a bit of rocker on the tip and tail. And then you got Prime, which is a high-end charging ski that's got carbon in it, lightweight, you can tour, you can do whatever you want with that ski. So that's a, that's the lineup, just like that, and a breakdown. A stomped breakdown then. So if you got money and you got skills, Candid. But I do actually think it's rather good for beginners too, or like um, you're doing your first fives, that kind of thing. Uh, Prodigy line, gonna look more at it don't know too much about it but you could also have skills with little money I think you'll be fine with this one and the prime stuff looks pretty sick oh no I mean the dictator uh, 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 I'm not sure and hey, we got the candy one candy 1.0 how you doing I'm Josh I'm here at Ispo I'm gonna present to you guys the 1.0 the Candid 1.0 so this key here I would say quick, just quickly on the construction. So this has this little like nice little carbon plate on the in, on the on here just to reinforce it and to dampen it a little bit so that when you're hitting rails and stuff you don't feel the vibration as much. But then the other thing that it has is thicker edges, 2.5 mils, so you just get like a little bit more solid of a ski. And then the other thing it has is some rocker and the tip and tail, a little bit easier to butter. Or, pivot your ski you know um, so this ski here I would say is we feel like it's kind of for like that mid-range freestyler I would say not not the soup the most stiff um, ski out there but definitely not the softest either um, so it's definitely for like sort of somebody who's you know competent but um, who's still learning how to ski as well or somebody who just likes that sort of mid-range flex so yeah and it's symmetrical as well so you can go just as well backwards as you can forwards, which is a nice thing for some people. So there you go, that's, uh, that's the 1.0. I'd say I agree. The ski is not super soft in the flex, so if you want to learn butters, maybe go for a little bit softer ski, otherwise it's pretty good for you who cannot maybe already do your first nose butter threes and that kind of thing. These, these poles are new and uh, they match the skis really well and <laughs> <laughs> we have a matching skateboard as well, just for those guys who really want to have some cool Condi swag. Yeah. Really cool, but not so necessary. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, if you already have a poles, they're certainly not necessary. And if you don't like using poles, then they're definitely not necessary. So, how is the flex compared to the one? Softer, harder? Um, I would say the flex is about the same, actually. I think that... You know, it's going to be a little bit stiffer underfoot and then pretty nice easy flex in the tip and the tail. But definitely I think that this, this ski here is characterized by how, you know, how stiff it is underfoot. It feels really nice like when you're on edge, it really holds the edge super well. But then uh, for freestyling and skiing pow and stuff, it's got a nice progressive flex in the tip and tail. So also easier to pivot, got nice float to it and stuff like that. So can he actually ski on... Exactly the same kind of skis that you can buy in the shops. Yes, 
Kanye typically st sticks to the Kanye 4.0, and then once in a while, if he's doing a, a comp, he'll go on, he'll go to the 2.0. But for the most part, he's he's the, the 4.0 is his key of choice, as you can see in the videos. Like that's the what he's on pretty much all the time. So these other skis are skis that he would ski on. If, if the conditions were different, these were the skis that he would ski on. Um, this ski here is what he did. What was that comp that he did last year? Was it the, he won like a audience choice, some, uh, I don't remember. anyway, I that was, he was skiing on this one for that comp. So if he rides exactly this ski, it makes sense that it's a bit stiff on the foot that it's not the softest flex. Exactly. Because you can't go a million miles an hour on. Uh, over with noodle. Right, right. Uh, makes so much sense. The other thing about this ski is that it also has that carbon reinforcement under the foot to give it a little bit more mm -hmm. durability and dampening. You know, just when you're hitting rails and stuff, you, you, it absorbs more of that, of the uh, vibrations. So, it gives it a nice damp feel. This comes in a youth edition um, that goes up to 165 centimeters. So you don't have to be a kid for that if you're 165 only. Maybe that one will suit you. Is the flex a little softer on the youth one? The flex is actually going to be like, t compared to a regular junior ski, this is going to be, I would say, stiffer. You know, it's uh, it's definitely a good, a really good junior ski. It's a wood construction ski. So, like so competing junior, or would that be the person that should buy it? I would, I would definitely think so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that this ski here, I don't know, like doing like a mark market compare, like checking out what's out there in the market, there's not a lot of skis in this in this category. So yeah, I would say that if you're a really good skier and you're, um, you know, your, your, your height is less than 165, then this is kind of the ski that you're going to want. The, the, um, either the fatter model in the 2.0 or the thinner model in the 1.0. And for next year, the 165 length is new. So it's the first time we're coming out. So, so for some kids, we've sort of been in between where the 166 2.0 is just too stiff for them, too, too wide. Now we've got a ski in the, uh, in the 165 Junior that's gonna be a lot more, that won't be so stiff and it'll be way easier to butter and to do stuff with, so. That's cool. The three remains unchanged for this year. The three is going to be more of a, a free ride ski, obviously. What a lot of people are doing with this ski, with this ski here is because it's got a lightweight core in it. Um, it's it's a great backcountry touring ski. So a lot of people put like the Kingpin on it, for instance, or a Dinafit, and and they use this to go up and then have a, a nice jibby fun ski to go down and uh, do some backcountry freestyle with. So I think that that is really, in essence, what this ski is, when it really comes alive. And, but the reality is, is that this is just a really easy ski to ski. It's soft mm -hmm. um, in the tip and tail, it carves well, and it just works for a lot of people. I mean, that's why it's, it's successful, is it just easy ski to get onto. Um, so I would I'd put it in that, you know, if you're, if you're looking to like, you want the stiffest ski out there, this isn't gonna be it. But if you want something that's easy to ski, easy to turn, um, that you can use for a lot of different things because you can carve with this as well because it's got a little bit shorter turning radius then I think this would be your ski. Can I flex it? You can certainly flex it. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna have so much footage on flexing it. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, look at that flexing. Quite soft actually. Yeah. So I mean, there's some truth to what uh, he's saying. It's still quite steady there. Exactly. I think it would be uh, quite a good time for me. To use that one and the candy four i'm i'm using myself the atom ben chetler right now i had the magnum opus last season how's this one going to compare to it i think that this guy here it's a little bit it's a progressive it's a definitely a progressive shape so it's got that tapered tip and tail the idea there is to really allow you to have more float beneath your feet keep you more a little bit more above the snow it's got a generous tip and tail rocker, so super easy to pivot, flat, uh, slash your turn. Really fun when you're just looking to like jib all over the mountain. You want to use every little terrain, and you just want a ski that like is super lively. This guy also has a lightweight core, which I, I'm not sure. I don't think the bench leather does, so that might be a little bit of a difference between this one. This is a ski that you can use. You can put some touring bindings on as well, and uh, use it to go uphill, um, and then have a great time coming down.
Yeah, it's quite impressive actually. 1,960 grams on um, this fat kind of ski. It's pretty good, I think. Yeah, you get on that ski and it just feels nimble because it has no, it has less weight to it. And it's easy to get it around. Can I flex it? Yes, you can. <laughs> oh. That would be poppy. Quite soft, that bit, you can really feel it. Done. Quite sturdy in the middle. And it looks quite sexy. I agree. Do you think it would suit me? Oh yeah, man, that would definitely suit you. For sure. Yeah. It's the it's gold. The gold matches your hair. Ah. In Switzerland, they say I'm blonde, but in Sweden, I'm such a brunette. <laughs> oh, whatever. They I'll take your word for it. This is the Prodigy 1.0. As I was saying before, we renamed these. So this was actually the Soma last year. This ski here, I would say, is for somebody who's who's looking for something that's like easy to ski. It's not a super stiff ski. If you're looking to be able to make a turn easily when you're not going super fast, this is going to be it. It's got a raised up tail, but I wouldn't call it a pure twin tip. So it's something that like if, if a, a really high tail intimidates you, this, this kind of ski here is going to be nice because it's not going to kick up as much snow and you know what I mean, but you can still go backwards with it so it's really nice. This isn't um, a symmetrical ski, it's what we call a directional ski, so the tip is wider than the tail. Um, another characteristic about this ski is that it's a cap ski, but it, just so you understand, when you say cap ski, it's still a sandwich construction ski. It's got wood inside it. It's still a really awesome, well-built ski. The only thing is that you don't have a sidewall. I mean, that's really it. So there's just, when you're building this ski, there's one less step in the construction. And because there's one less step, you're able to sell it just a little bit cheaper, but that doesn't mean that it's less durable, it doesn't mean that it holds an edge less well, it doesn't have any of those properties that is commonly associated to cap skis. It's just a really awesome well-built ski. In fact, even in the tip, we do have some sidewall uh, up there, you know, just to give it a little bit different of a look. Yeah, I think it's pretty sexy. Can I flex it? Yes, you can. Now this? The beginner tail butter could totally tail butt this one. Look at that. It's not that low. It's definitely lower, but. It's a, it's a ski. It's I don't, a ski. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's really. It's not for me, but if you're, you know, one of the cheapest skiers that still looks like it. And um, I think if you get your start with your buttons quite fast, that tail is quite flexy. So this one, tell me about it. <laughs> I'll bring it this way. So this would be the, uh, this is the Prodigy 2.0. A little bit wider, similar style to the Prodigy 1.0. But on this one we've got sidewall, beautiful bases, new logo for this year. This is also a directional ski, it is not a symmetrical ski. I think on this one, the tip, you can see the tip maybe a bit proportionally a little bit lower, but still, it's got, I'm sorry, the tail is a little bit lower, but it's still got a really nice tail to it. Um, yeah, again, this is gonna be sort of the same style of ski as the uh, Prodigy 1.0, but a bit wider. So if you wanna go, you know, adventure a little bit more off piece, then this is gonna be a little bit more uh, geared towards that. For you who's not sure about the directional part, basically means skis better forwards and a little less good backwards. But it doesn't matter that much. The skin backwards is hard, anyways. In my opinion. No, I, I agree. I think that's that's right. Yeah. Did you want to give it a flex? Yeah. Yeah. Just give it a flex. Just give it a flex. Oh, that's well. That looks pretty. The top sheet is something out of this world. It's really soft. <laughs> Why? Just doing you on this. It's just a textured top sheet. It's a textured top sheet. It's a little bit more durable, but really, it just—it's just—it yeah, it feels nice to touch, and it's got a nice. It, it just gives it a little bit more like uh, I don't know. It just gives it some like nice depth, you know. It gives it a bit of depth. So this one is a surf machine. But why? Well. This guy here, surf machine, when you look at the new shapes of these guys, it actually kind of looks a little bit more like a surfboard. So it's almost like you've got like a surfboard in the front and then a surfboard in the back. 
And that's sort of how this key is working. It's working like a couple of surfboards. It really is nice and floaty. It's playful, easy to turn. It's got rocker in the tip and tail again, so it's easy to pivot. So this key here is going to be for somebody who wants something that's got a nice short turning radius, easy to turn on piece, but then when you get into the pow or you know chopped up snow, it floats really nicely and again super easy to turn. So this is really a type of ski that does does everything, it floats well in the pow and uh, carves nicely on piece. That's it, man. And the prototype four is this like for a wannabe Eric Pollard? <laughs> Like, um, it's a bit softer, but the Prodigy, the Prodigy 4 is definitely going to be a little bit softer of a ski, so I would call it a, a good intro ski to your first powder ski maybe. Really easy to ski and pow. I mean, it's just easy to ski all over the place. It's not, not super stiff. Um, really nice, durable construction. It's got a little bit different construction in terms of, um, like, normally we use glass fibers in a ski, but on this one here, one of the layers is actually flax. So um, it's a, just a natural product. It's a little bit less harmful to make it, um, and uh, so we're just, you know, putting something, trying to trying to put something a little different into our skis that's a little bit better for the environment. Um, obviously, it costs a little bit more, so that's why we're able to do it in this ski, and why we haven't done it in the other skis is because we're trying to keep the the price steady on those guys. But uh, these bigger, fatter skis tend to be a little bit more expensive, so. Um, so yeah, we can do that. Um, again, it, it's sort of the same philosophy as these other skis where you've got this kind of like surfboard shape in the tip and tail that really help with uh, floating and, and also just like slashing out, carbon, uh, slashing out and kind of like washing out the turn in a really surfy way. And what he means with, did you say slashing out the turn? Yeah, yeah, slashing out Yeah, the turn. he means like, you know, basically skid, like a skidded turn. Which is pretty nice if you're going like a bit too fast for your like ability to just be able to go into a skid from a turn to like slow that beep down if you're out of control. Yeah, that's it. And basically all rocket skis are pretty good for that. If you're in tight areas, yeah. you're gonna be washing out your turn. You're not actually like carving the whole way through the turn when you're in deeper snow or chopped up snow. You're really washing out that turn. And that's why a lot of these skis now have that kind of surfboard shape in the back. Of the have that rocker in the tail, just super easy to wash out the turn in the back. And and also, for me, like it's just so much more fun too. If I'm like hitting little kickers on the side of the slopes and stuff like that, which I love to do. Like if I'm just on a piece, I don't want to just be on the piece. I want to go and like play off the side. That's why these skis are just, they're so fun, you know, with that tail like that. It just makes it so you can like kind of surf the side of the mountain. So yeah. Now you got some sexy women skis. Yeah. Only 5% of my viewers are female, unfortunately it's sad, but they are sexy. Mm. Well, I think for us the yeah. most exciting thing for this year is that we're, we signed Kelly Sildaru, who is a uh, badass. She's, yeah, she's like a phenom. If you know what that word means, like she's just like not sort of natural, not, or not, she's totally natural. She's not, not you know, her, Talent is above normal. Let's put it that way. Her talent is not normal. Yeah. So um, she's been skiing on the Ambit, which is our freestyle uh, women's ski. This we only have as a women's ski, so um, we don't have this ski. What's in, in special about it? This one here, it's just a soft ski. I mean, it's it's just a soft ski. It's made for freestyle. It's symmetrical, and it's also it's also a cap ski. So um, I think it's got a really good. Uh, the value of the ski is really good. Like what you're paying for for a uh, wood constructed wood uh, core ski is really, really good. I mean, it's just it's a ski that's going to last you a long time. Um, it's got a lot of pop to it. It's going to have a you know, a lot of pop for a long time. So you have that like nice like when you're going off a jump and you're ollieing, you're just going to really feel like the ski's lively, like it's giving something back to you. Yeah, and it's just it's a beautiful looking ski too. So that looks sick. Why does it have the pull cap? So this is a way for us to reduce the price a little bit without taking away the any performance from the ski. So you still get a great ski, but at a little bit cheaper price. That's the honest truth. So we had a huge walk through here. From down there, did not look at the Dictator series so much. Went to the <laughs> Candy series, they look pretty dope. I think that's the kind of stuff for me. But for you who haven't yet learned your first buttons and stuff, I think you should be checking out the Prodigy series. It's a big thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Really, keep watching. Learn how to ski. I love it.